Thank you very much, Sir In Touch. We welcome questions from her. Unprecedented in a scale for New Zealand and around the world, a really big randomized control trials to look into the impact of health impact of vitamin D supplementations on participants aged between 50 to 84. So, what was the primary outcomes of Vida study? It was to see whether supplements, vitamin D supplementations, can decrease the risk of cardiovascular diseases in the first place, and secondly, whether it can decrease the risk of acute respiratory infections, falls, and fractures. But where does my study stand for? It had also some sub-studies. Safety was one of them. So as well as it's important to see whether there is a benefit, it's very important to see the side effects or safety uh, part of these supplementations. Is there any side effects? So. Uh, there, as I told you, it was a randomized control trial with two arms. From these 5,100 people, half of them were randomized to vitamin D, and the other half were randomized to control or pl placebo arm. But none of them knew which mm, capsule they were taking because it was double blind ones. As well as them, uh, even investigators didn't know that. So I wanted to see if side effects was weighing like, like this towards vitamin D or like this, or they were evenly distributed between these two. But what were my instruments? As I told you, it was a large uh, randomized control trial with vitamin D supplementation. They gave all participants for three to four years 2.5 milligram vitamin D3 every month. With these monthly capsules that they were sending to participants, they also gave them this monthly questionnaire where they could report their health status, where I could get the side effects that they were reporting. As well as that, they, were, they had done this baseline, um, comprehensive baseline assessments, clinical and biochemical assessments, as well as interviews. In that interview, they asked them about their lifestyle, physical activity, sun exposure, and all the medical history that they had, and their medications. So all these databases helped me to, be in, uh, to have inst enough instruments to do further research. How about uh, side effects? What kind of side effects should I be expecting? So I felt, okay, I have to go to the literature. But I did a systematic review of all randomized control trials that had at least given their participants six months of supplementation. I thought, okay, six months should be enough time to have any side effects reported. And also, uh, I, I included all those studies. I took this from, uh, I included all those studies uh, uh, with vitamin D, provided that they didn't give calcium in one arm if they did, haven't given this calcium in placebo arm. So moving on to my systematic review, I found 1,800 articles. After exclusion, I ended up having 121 studies. I used uh, information about side effects from these studies, entered it into a review manager. Review manager calculated the rest of the thing for me, a statistical things. So as you can see, uh, down there, it gave me risk ratio of giving, for example, in this stance, hypercalcemia, uh, uh, of giving um, supplementation and experiencing hypercalcemia. In this stance, it had increased hypercalcemia. Oh, in overall, these studies that reported hypercalcemia. 
The same thing, the same first blood for other outcomes, like dermatological outcomes, GI, uh, gastrointestinal symptom, and other. The same thing it gave me. So it was enough information for me to move on to my study. So what about VIDA study? What did I find? Uh, in the preliminary results that I get, I found out that 260 people in vitamin D versus 245 in placebo reported side effects. It was statistically significantly, not a statistically significant difference. Actually, the, the scale was quite similar between two arms. But I thought, what about the time? Were there more participants reporting side effects later in the study or not? How about like, the difference between these two arms? So uh, as you can see, the broken uh, red line represents vitamin D, while the blue line represents placebo. Uh, on the y-axis, you can see frequency of um, side effects. It's quite similar, isn't it? It's very similar. I don't see any difference. If there is, so I thought, if there is like um, side effects reported, it shouldn't be really um, related to vitamin D. So what else? I have to dig quite a lot into this research using those databases, looking into like lifestyle um, factors, variables, and other variables, and see whether probably their sun exposure, socioeconomic factors, and other factors affected reporting these side effects. Uh, so that's me, that's my research. <laughs> Uh, I would like to thank my supervisors and my colleagues and statisticians in the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics, School of Population Health. Thank you very much. Apologies for interrupting your presentation, Sarin right. Taj. That's all right. We welcome questions now for her. Questions? Uh, okay. Placebo is not actually a drug. It's quite similar to the drug we are giving them, so they can distinguish between these two. So any drug in interventional studies, they, they should have a placebo so that um, participants can't, you know, can't report something that is uh, uh, from their perception of knowing that they are on that drug. Yeah. So it helps in, yeah, helps in uh, clinical trials. It's, Do you still use sugar? <laughs> I don't think so, no, no. It was quite old time, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I've got a question, sorry, over here. Um, how prevalent is the use of vitamin D supplements in New Zealand? Uh, I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Uh, I, I can't remember. I'm sure that I did the review, but to be honest, uh, I don't have this, the answer to this question exactly. But I mean, it must be but a problem that you're it, studying. It, it is a problem uh, because about 65% of New Zealanders have normal vitamin D status, but others didn't, don't have. And this vitamin D deficiency means like about 35% have deficiency. It's amazing because we have really good sunlight here. But, in, uh, you know, with the scare of getting skin cancer and high prevalence of skin cancer in New Zealand, people obviously don't go out as much as they have to to get enough vitamin D. Yeah. One of us is going to ask the sunscreen yeah. question. Well, well no, uh, pretty much. Uh, the, question, uh, the fact is, New Zealand's quite a dangerous environment when it comes yeah, to yeah. the sun. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if your research had proven that our vitamin D supplementations were unsafe, was that a concern for you? Yeah. Yeah, we be a concern for everyone, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, up to this point, there, vitamin D there was there quite safe. Is there? I mean, uh, instead of going out, there's something more. Prepared. Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, if, if you can be outside, uh, I mean, unprotected for 10 minutes every day during like 10, 10 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m., you can get enough vitamin D from the sun. And you know, you are, yeah, in real life, you, you are busy during that time, so you can get, yeah. Get out the sun. This leads to my question. <laughs> in your performance, yeah. you had you putting on sunscreen. Yeah. Has the sun safe message had a direct impact on vitamin D in New Zealand? Is there a direct correlation that we're s fixing one problem and creating another? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, sunscreen can block uh, the amount of uh, UVB you can get from sun that helps your skin to, uh, to make vitamin D. In, into your body, yeah, it can block. It depends on how much sunscreen you apply, obviously, but yeah. But we don't have children with rickets yet. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Serene Touch, for that presentation.